Since 1992, the Center for Continuing Education, CCE, has presented seminars featuring the best in topics and talent. Our programs are available in online, DVD, and CD formats. CCE can also customize seminars for your law firm or corporate law department needs. The Center for Continuing Education is a State Bar of California approved MCLE provider. The Center for Continuing Education, CCE, is a State Bar of California MCLE approved provider. The Center for Continuing Education, CCE, presents Immigration Opportunities for the World's Top Athletes, Artists, Performers, and Scientists. Today's program features two highly respected San Francisco-based immigration law attorneys. James A. Bach has been working exclusively with immigration cases for several decades and has lectured and written extensively on immigration law subjects. Mr. Bach is one of less than 8% of California immigration attorneys certified by the State Bar of California Board of Legal Specialization as a certified specialist in immigration and nationality law. He has been given the highest AV rating by Martindale Hubble for ability and ethics for over a decade and is included in the current Martindale Hubble Bar Register of Preeminent Lawyers. From 1987 to 1990, Mr. Bach was the head of the Immigration Law Department of Crosby, Heafy, Roach and May, now Reed Smith. Currently, Mr. Bach serves as the chair of the State Bar's Immigration and Nationality Advisory Commission, which writes and grades the California Immigration and Nationality Specialty Examination. He is also an arbitrator for the San Francisco Bar Association. Robert G. Warner has been practicing immigration law in San Francisco since 1971. He received his A.B. from Harvard College, cum laude, in 1967 and his J.D. from the University of California, Berkeley in 1970, where he graduated in the top 10% of his class and was editor of the Law Review. Mr. Warner has been granted the highest Martindale Hubble AV preeminent rating for both legal ability and ethical standards. Mr. Warner has been certified as a legal specialist in immigration and nationality law by the State Bar of California Board of Legal Specialization for over 20 years. He was in the first group of immigration law specialists to be so certified. Mr. Warner serves on the California State Bar Immigration and Nationality Advisory Commission, helping to write and grade the immigration specialty exam. He has been designated a Northern California super lawyer in the field of immigration law by his peers. Hello, our program today is Immigration Opportunities for the World's Top Athletes, Artists, Performers, and Scientists. My name is James Bach, and I'm joined today by Robert Werner. We're both employment immigration attorneys in San Francisco. I'm going to start with uh, the advantages of what we call priority worker categories. There is no uh, priority worker term uh, in the regulations, that's something that we use as a shorthand to discuss alternatives to labor certification. And uh, that could be either the extraordinary ability, uh, exceptional ability, uh, workers for Schedule A Group 2, outstanding professors. These words, extraordinary, exceptional, outstanding, uh, all have different meanings, there are different terms of art. If you go to uh, Webster's Dictionary, you'll find they pretty much mean the same thing, but uh, when you deal with these concepts in the uh, immigration context, uh, they all mean different things. The reason we talk about priority worker uh, categories and the, the main reason that we use them is to avoid labor certifications. So when you have a one of these exceptional workers, you have to first look at all of these 
these possibilities and opportunities. And keep in mind that even though the Immigration Service in its press releases, uh, the public, Congress, anyone who talks about immigration policy will all pay lip service to the idea that we want to get the best and the brightest people into the United States, those people who can seriously benefit the economy, the science, and the art of the United States. But in practice, when we file these petitions, we get a lot of resistance from the USCIS. There's a lot of pushback on all of these categories, and the mindset seems to be, how do we deny the petition rather than how do we make it easy for these highly talented people to immigrate to the United States? So in looking at the various options and keeping in mind when you have, let's say, a very uh, highly talented uh, uh, biochemist who's written articles, who's maybe written a book, who lectures at various conferences, and who's cited in uh, many different uh, types of publications, you first want to look at what is, not just what does this person qualify for, but what is the best strategy for getting this person uh, a green card? And I would suggest that the first thing you want to look at is a labor certification. So these priority worker categories are all designed to avoid labor certification and maybe had more resonance and more utility uh, 10 years ago when a labor certification could take five years or, or three years or uh, there were some cases taking uh, more than five years. But now we can get a labor certification after we do all of the recruitment sometimes in just uh, a few months. Uh, we have cases that are taking three or four months and just recently the Department of Labor uh, mentioned that they're trying to get uh, uh, the processing time down to uh, under 60 days for, uh, for most labor certification cases. Jim, if I could just interject there, yeah, I, although um, at the moment labor certifications are more predictable than the priority worker petitions that you're discussing. About the time we start relying on a time frame, the Department of Labor sometimes decides not to work for a few months and suddenly what was taking, uh, when they first started this current system, you could get one done like in a week uh, sometimes. And then next thing we knew it was six months. But I agree with you that currently it seems reasonably stable that within a couple months you can get a labor certification unless you get unlucky and run into a roadblock. Whereas the direct petitions for priority workers that Jim's talking about are considerably more unpredictable in um, result. As he's mentioned, the government agency has displayed uh, some hostility to these that doesn't seem to be very good policy as a national policy. Right, and uh, that's, that's correct. When you're projecting processing times, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, always uh, unpredictable. And um, over the past, say, 15 years, the labor certification uh, processing time has been a month. It's been five years, and it's back down uh, to a few months uh, in the future. Who knows? So avoiding a labor certification uh, can be uh, one of the considerations. But uh, one of th the advantages of labor certification is that you have a pretty predictable uh, outcome. Um, probably more than 85% of the labor certifications filed are uh, approved. And when you get to uh, scientists and engineers and people who are clearly in short supply 
uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, approval rate was above 95 percent. Uh, contrast that to uh, extraordinary uh, ability petitions or national interest waiver cases. Uh, the national interest waiver cases for many years were hovering around 50 percent approval uh, rate and uh, uh, I, I think there's, there, there is less certainty there. So one of the things you want to look at is uh, labor certification. You want to have a very clear idea of why you're using the priority worker category. And let's start with the, e the two EB1 categories that we're going to talk about today. Uh, extraordinary ability, people who are uh, at the very top of their field, and the outstanding professor and researchers. These EB1 categories are great for people from India and China, where the EB2 category is currently backlogged four years, uh, uh, recently has been backlogged five years. So you can avoid, in addition to the labor certification, you can uh, jump immediately uh, to the uh, immigrant visa petition and then uh, avoid the uh, quota backlog. For someone from any country other than India and China, you have a current EB2 category right now. And of course, that's been different in the past and it could be different in the future. But right now, it's current. And you really have to think long and hard whether uh, there's a compelling reason not to do uh, the labor certification. If I could just expand on that a little, Jim. Uh, the visa availability date for various employment categories limits when a person can take the final step for their green card. And as you mentioned, for these uh, people from India and China, the EB2 category, although it's current for the rest of the world, for them is now backed up to 2007 so that currently somebody who started a labor certification in uh, November of 2007, actually October 31st and earlier, are the only people who can take the last step. And so for them, as Jim suggested, it's, there's a much bigger incentive to